Hey guys, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein, and today we're gonna try to answer Gotham Chess recommended opening after d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop to b4. This is called the Nimzo Indian defense. Now, Aaron Nimzovich was the pioneer of this opening in the 1920s. It wasn't popular before because people generally tended to stop the e4 push with the pawn push d5. But Nimzovich said, you don't have to commit the pawn to d5. You can apply pressure on the center with the pieces by pinning the knight and getting ready for rapid development. So obviously over the years, White has chosen several setups. Lots and lots of moves are covered by Gotham. But I'm going to recommend to you very good line for white that I believe has both positional and attacking ideas. After this first quiet move e3, black generally castles. Why not? Here, I'm going to re recommend to you slightly less popular move than bishop d3 and knight f3. This move a3. We're actually welcoming the bishop swap for the knight. And after bishop takes, pawn takes, let's assess this position. White has double pawns, but in turn gets the bishop pair, and the king is going to be white's target. If white can manage to launch this e4, e5 pawn, we're going to have a very nice attack with the two bishops. So black over the years have developed several um, plans. One is to play c5 simply trying to fix the pawns. b6 is a popular move with the idea to put the bishop on b7. And d5 I would not recommend because that undoubles the pawns. And white can play bishop d3 and because of the flexibility of the knight can go to knight e2, castle, knight g3, f3, e4. This is called the Botvinnik plan, the Botvinnik steamroller, pawn steamroller plan, a very effective plan to get f3, e4, not much black can do about this plan. So let's take a look at all of these popular plans and start with the move b6. Obviously the idea is to fan shadow the bishop on b7, put some pressure on the long diagonal, bishop d3, bishop b7. Now the benefit of the knight being on g1 is we get to play f3, building the wall of pawns g2, f3, e4 against this bishop. And after e5, after rather c5, e4, knight c6, I'm going to recommend to you an idea that was used by Fabiano Caruana, this unusual looking move, knight h3. You would say, well, why wouldn't you develop the knight toward the center and protect the pawn? But we have a different idea in mind. If black grabs that pawn, pawn takes, knight takes, now the whole point is clear. Knight is on d4, not guarding e5. e5 x clam. That's the point, hitting this knight on f6. And now after knight e8, white has a very nice tactic with the queen and the bishop working together to x-ray this knight, what is called discovered attack. Bishop takes sacrifice, opens up the enemy king. And here, if black plays a careless move, like rook c8, for instance, after queen and the knight working together, black is finding himself in serious trouble. That's the benefit of the knight being on h3. Check and queen h4, and believe it or not, black can't stop mate. Thanks to the e pawn covering the square, thanks to the f pawn, we've got every square covered. There's absolutely nowhere black can come and protect h7. So let's go back and Fabiano's opponent, who is a grandmaster, played the move knight e8. Logical idea to get out of the e5 push. So now, bishop e3, rook c8. Black's plan is to put pressure on the c4 pawn. After castles, knight a5. Here, white should play d5. Okay. And then, black plays bishop a6. Hitting the pawn again. Queen e2. Knight d6. Black has three attackers against the two defenders. 
the pawn on c4 is gone. But the beauty is, again, we have an attacking setup as white. e5, knight takes, bishop g5, five is opponent, played queen e7. And now we have a beautiful battery with queen e4, lining the bishop and the queen. And looks like black's in trouble. g6, now black is paying the price for trading that f8 bishop. Remember, early on, the dark squares around the king are too weak and queen f4 is unstoppable. This is, get guys, game over. So let's get back. And let's look at a different setup for black. So the other popular move, like I mentioned, is to play c5. Now, what is the point of this move c5? As I mentioned, they're fixing the pawns. The knight wants to come, so we play bishop d3 to c6. Notice that with knight on c6, whenever white's going to play for e4, they're going to try to play d6, e5. But before we look at knight c6 move, once again, black does have an option to play this move b6 here. We are going to play e4 in one go. And after bishop b7, I love this move, e5. This is virtually a novelty. No grandmaster has played this before. And the idea is after bishop takes g2, you're sacrificing a pawn and the rook. Now we play bishop g5. Bishop takes h1. The knight on f6 is now taken. And the big threat is... If black takes back with the pawn, queen h5 is unstoppable checkmate or we're going to win the enemy queen. So because of this threat, f5 drops the queen. Rook e8 is the only move to try to fight on. And now there's a forced win. Queen takes king here. Check. King here. Now if you take with the bishop, the king can run away. Be careful your queen hangs. This is the simplest. If king here, it's checkmate. Now the bishop is opened up. And if king here, any check, queen e5 or queen f4, picking up this guy next. That's game over. So I think the better defense is to play g6 back here. Again, the king is too vulnerable against the attack. For instance, queen g4. So the idea is here, here, and mate. King h8, they get ready for this idea. Now queen h4. Now, if they start with rook g8, or rather if they start with d6, there's a cool idea. We can start with bishop take g6, f take g6, f7, anywhere the queen goes, doesn't matter. Bam, and it's checkmate. This is a very important pattern. The king has no moves. So that you may wonder, okay, what if they start with this move queen e8, just to get out of it. Now the knight gets active. Again, this idea we've seen before. D6. And now I want to show you a very beautiful checkmating pattern that is absolutely stunning. First, queen h6. Well, black's moves are forced. Rook g8. Now bishop f4. Very important to leave that square for the knight. Knight d7. Knight g5. If knight f8, the knight is not going to be very stable there. We'll just take the deep one, pick up the knight and mate on next move. So you may wonder if we go back, knight takes f6. And it seems like the knight is doing a good job protecting h7. Next move is queen f8. Black is finally repelling the attack. But no, white has an absolutely stunning idea. Bishop e5. You sacrifice the bishop. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Now virtually on any move, we take fall by mate. But black offers the queen swap. And this is the most beautiful part of this attack. E takes F. We ignore the fact that our queen's under attack. And now deliver checkmate with the knight. Absolutely stunning idea. And black is made. Again, thanks to the F6 pawn. Smothered mate concepts. So that's if they play B6 on move 7. And let's talk about the main line, knight c6. Now it's going to make our move e4 much harder to get. We've got to develop our pieces first. 
I like knight f3, d6, e4, e5. So black basically locked up this bishop on d3. Best that move now is to play d5, knight e7. And this is the most popular way to play this for black. It's called the Hubner variation, named after a German grandmaster who was in the top 10 of the world at some point. And the idea is he is using the fact that two knights prefer closed positions over the two bishops. Our pawns are still doubled, although black does not have an easy way of attacking them. It's more about buffering white's uh, two bishops by locking up the game. Here, I'm going to recommend to you a very unusual and interesting approach to not commit the king yet to the castle and king side. Start with this move, h3. It's a useful prophylactic move against bishop g4 or knight g4. They typically play knight g6. And now g3, this g pawn restricts the knight. The rook protects the pawn. The king stands on e1. We're actually not going to plan to castle in the next move or two. Why? Well, the center is closed. The rook may be more active on the king side. And for all we know, the king may end up going to the queen side in the future. So h6 is the typical idea here for black. It has been played before. We develop the bishop. And then typical plan for black is to try to play for f5. They play knight to h7. Now I'm going to show you a really beautiful way using prophylactics to stop f5, or rather prepare for it, with knight d2. Okay, and they say, okay, well, you allow me my main idea. Now we take, bishop takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and it looks as though black achieved his plan, managed to get rid of the bishop pair, weakened white a little bit on the light squares, but all of that is irrelevant because of white's next move. Queen g4, x clamp. Hidden the knight, the rook, and also x train that king. No matter what black does, he loses material. First of all, knight e7 drops the pawn and then mate threat next. That's no good. Queen f6 is logical, but then knight e4. Black's queen has to maintain both the rook and the knight, protects them both. Fork. Black loses material again. What's left? Rook f6. Same problem. The rook is under attack, can't move it. Black is going to lose the exchange. So if f5 doesn't work, let's go back, then what to do for black? Well, the only other idea left is to play knight to e7 to support the f5 push. But that allows white to play f4. Now ef, gf, we're not afraid of that with the knight being on e7. Black can't really allow the pawn storm to keep going. Black's king is too weak. So f5 is logical. But then we play e5 ourselves. And this position is very dangerous for black. As the position opens up, the two bishops are very, very important. Now let me just share with you this piece of analysis. d takes e, f takes e. Obviously f4, no big deal. We can even take the pawn. So they usually play, if they were to play this way, knight g6, hit the pawn, and simply knight f3. Everything is protected. Rook e8, I think, is best try to, again, put pressure here. Taken is quite risky. And now I'm going to show you this beautiful idea why we didn't castle earlier. King to d2. The king is actually safer in these two squares. Given up the central pawn. And now bishop f4, rook's under attack, rook e8, queen h5. White is turn up really powerful attack. These guys are simple spectators. Just to show you how the attack would play out, let's say they play knight f6, queen g6, so we have some nice ideas. Rook g1, bishop h6 at some point. So they get out of bishop h6 with king h8, rook comes to g1. Mate and one is a threat. Let's say queen e7. Then rook e1. Lots of threats. Queen f8. Bishop d6. Again, he can't take the bishop because of mate and one. 
Queen g8, Bishop e7 attacking this knight. Knight doesn't have a whole lot of squares left. Position is completely lost. If knight d7, we can just take the pawn with the beautiful threat of bishop e6. Yeah, too many threats to deal with. Black is just completely dead. So this is the summary of my favorite way to play against the Nimzo. Do you have any questions? I was wondering if um, back to the Fabiano game that um, we talked about earlier, um, yeah, was it a better back. move than the knight e8 move that was played in the game? Uh, in this position? Yeah, so knight e8 is there a thing that black could do instead? Um, maybe black can try d6 to try to stop e5 push. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. But it does enable white to just continue with his plan with bishop e3 castles and then long-term attack. But at least this way black does not lose right away. I see. Because here the Hubner setup with e5 is possible, but it feels like it's a better version for white. Why? Because while black has misplaced this bishop and very slow we try to go after that pawn, we already have the knight, the bishop developed, and white can start attacking right away with either castles, bishop a6, queen e2, and then f4, or even g4, these ideas. So it's called a long-term attack and setup. Black can't really do much. Even if black tries to attack this pawn with queen d7, queen a4, we just play a4. And they're stuck. They have no counterplay. Both of these pieces are out of the game. White eventually opens up the king side and checkmates. Hey, check this video out to make sure that you get more important information to bring your chest to the next level.